In this age of gender confusion, it's difficult to find advice you can trust to help protect your child from those who would seek to unduly influence them, setting them up to be manipulated and exploited. On Unmasking the Trans Movement, we discuss, educate, and deliver the info parents want and need to help their children, grandchildren, and even themselves. Welcome to Unmasking the Trans Movement. Now, here's your host, Brad Wilder. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. I'm your host, Brad Wilder. Great to have everybody here tonight. Lots of people will be logging in and finding us online for the second time ever on YouTube. Uh, John is uh, standing by as well. Uh, John, great to have you on the program as always. Uh, we've got a lot to get to tonight. The cast report came out and there's a lot to talk about there. How are you? How are things down in, uh, in South Carolina, North Carolina? South Carolina. So everything is good. And Brad, thank you as always for being here. We couldn't do this without you. And, uh, you know, I want to encourage people to watch a segment that you produced on uh, Wake Up Canada. Uh, you actually covered this. And so I figured we would cover it as well. So I want to make a plug for your other life. You have many facets to you um, as a hockey coach as well. I, but, uh, I, I do have Canada a lot of facets. Days. That's right. So you you and I volunteer our time. We, we, are, we have a burden, as it were, for this, for kids, protecting women and children. And that's what we're going to, again, be endeavoring to do here on Unmasking the Trans Movement live stream. We yeah. are looking at it. That's that's exactly it. We have to protect the women and the children, and um, it uh, it seems to be creeping into all of our lives in a way that we never would have thought possible. So hopefully, uh, this program is going to educate, um, inspire, and instill people to uh, take uh, take the right action and 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 bring this to a stop. Uh, we're not against the trans movement. We're not against kids that need to be transitioned, but. It's not everybody's kid that needs to be transitioned or indoctrinated or groomed into this. So, again, that's that's why we're here to have that discussion. The doors are wide open. Uh, the books are open. And uh, we have a lot of special guests who are going to be part of this all along the way, John, that maybe you want to elaborate on some of the different people that are going to be, you know, in the future on this live episode every Sunday night at, at 9 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Central. Yeah, and if people want to see a preview, they can actually go to our site, unmaskingthetransmovement.com, or on YouTube, which is their, where they're watching this now. You can go to the channel, just begin to peruse. We're going to have, again, professionals. We will have those that have been impacted in one way or another by this grand scheme. Uh, in, I believe, next week, we're going to have Uta Hagen, who is a what's called a trans widow. She's been on our program multiple times. Uta is a wealth of information as far as she is the wife of a sexually deviant man who decided to... Ex ex-wife, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, ex-wife. Yes. Absolutely. Ex -wife, she was right? betrayed. Thank you. <laughs> that's right. So there's a category of women. They call themselves trans widows. And that's another way of saying these were wives of sexually deviant, unfaithful men, men that got into wearing women's underwear, cross-dressing, and then went um, into all sorts of things. And there's a pressure on them to keep their mouth shut and go along with it. So Uta will be with us next week. Uh, so we will be covering a lot of different facets as we already have on our, on our program. But tonight I figured we would kind of do a, an an overview, an overview of the concerns that we have, as well as touch on what's called the CAS report. It just came out in the UK so that people can understand uh, what is going on in terms of the uh, a good change over in Europe that hopefully will bring sanity and eventually may make its way over to Canada and here in the US. There are some significant changes that are taking place, at least in the U.S. The U.S. Supreme Court just upheld the Idaho restrictions on or against uh, the trans, uh, really the medicalization, which is the sterilization and amputation of kids. That was modeled after the South Dakota bill. We had Dr. Fred Deutsch, who 
really crafted then the model legislation. I think 27 states, give or take, have passed that. We interviewed him as really as a thank you to him. And I uh, helped kind of serve behind the scenes in a, a little uh, group, a working group. So that was really neat. But we're here to help educate people and parents and all good people, uh, really to help them understand what is this? Because it's been, the trans movement has really been 20 years in the making and it has brainwashed the Western world. And so we're here to help. Yeah, this isn't, this that. isn't, let me just jump in for a second. This isn't just um, kids who have a, a sexual preference of, of being gay or lesbian for that matter. This has, this has undertones that are much more deviant and go way farther down. Right, John? Uh, that's right. And I would actually, as a therapist, um, say that if any uh, child shows signs of being gay, the very first thing, uh, see, below the age of puberty, the very first thing any uh, person should think in terms of especially a mandated reporter is that there is likely sexual grooming going on. So prior to the age of puberty, if a child is not interfered with, if the child is allowed to be a child, a child will not have sexualized thoughts. They'll be normal. They'll be focusing on other things. So if you have a young person... Wait, under wait, the okay. I, listen, I, I agree with you up until a point of that being true. I think that the porn industry has kind of taken and, 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 and de developed that into something that, again, leads to that, that push that is coming not now necessarily from a parent who is being, you know, supportive... It's now coming from the child who has been engulfed into the porn industry and subvertedly manipulated in a variety of ways, whether it's through audio, whether it's through video, whether it's through fetish. There's a multiple things there going on. So as that individual gets hooked into that scenario, it's almost like they become... Parents want to be accepting. Parents want to do the best things they can for their kids. But the reality is that the parent's getting sucked in because the kid has been really groomed into by porn. And sure. and, and let's face that as the major, major thing here. And I, I'm no expert. You are. But you taught me a lot of stuff along the way over the last couple of years. And one of them is that um, this grooming isn't just happening from school or teachers or parents or you know outside influences the the real outside influence here is their phones their 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 phones and 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 being close access and proximity to a constant barrage of porn right uh, that's right and so parents need to be aware of the different avenues that a kid can be influenced unduly influenced and therefore groomed and uh, yeah so if a child is um uh, becoming sexualized, it doesn't necessarily mean that a perpetrator is having direct access, uh, but a kid can get sucked into that and then be ripe for those that are actively on the prowl, whether in school, whether in church. Predators love going to church, right? Um, well, the kids, are, the, kids are sucked for... into it. the kids are sucked into it, so they start looking for it too. Don't, don't, let's not forget that. The kids start oh, looking right. for that individual who is going to be supportive if they can't find it anywhere else. That's right. But there's always going to be an older. So if you have a kid that ends up starting to transition, what we would call transition, you can pretty much be assured that there is somebody older that is now has picked up and is now leading them along. As a matter of fact, let me I'm going to share the screen right with you. And I thought I'd give people a little bit of context. You can go on to any of my own YouTube and um, look for. Uh, what I have put together. Let me see behind the scenes. Uh, just in a, well, almost, almost. Okay, as you're um, pulling as you're pulling that up, let's let's say hi to a few people who are tuning in tonight. Okay. One of them is Chatty Charlie. Good evening, Chatty Charlie. Thanks a lot for stopping by and uh, and being part of tonight's broadcast. Um, there's some other individuals that I'm sure will be signing up shortly as you've been busy sharing the link tonight uh, to get some people on board. Um, if you do have a question, this is the Sunday Night Live Q&A here on Unmasking the Trans Movement with John Euler. It gives you a chance to ask some questions. 
Uh, we'll give you the uh, answers that hopefully will educate and help you along the way, whether you're a parent or a grandparent or even a child. Um, this uh, show is an educational program. Uh, we're here to help. We're here to discuss uh, the issues at hand, and there are a lot of issues with this particular movement. Um, it's coming at us from all angles, and as that continues to happen, we need the experts, and that's where John Euler and Uta uh, Hagen, as well as you know, uh, Dr. Michelle Cretella, uh, Fred Deutsch, as you mentioned, um, they, the Dr. list goes Inkelis. on and on and on. Alvin Lee and, uh, right. you know, <laughs> it just, it's a barrage of people trying to do the right thing to, to save women and children. And that's, that's our main prote protection and goal here. That's right. And Brad, it is interesting when I touch on the issue of, uh, quote unquote, gay children, letting people know there aren't gay children. There are kids that are being influenced sometimes we almost lose half the audience and it's very sad and what i would challenge parents with is this or adults with is this if you have an issue i'm just going to put it this way if you have an issue with your own sexuality don't project that upon your kid in this sense keep the main thing the main thing which is we have to help kids make it from childhood to adulthood unscathed that that's all we're talking about so so I can help people understand because a lot of people are going to say, well, they do all the time. All right, John, who do you think you are? Well, let me give you a little background. I don't think I've ever shown this picture. So, Brad, that we're going to unveil this picture. This was going back. I happen to find this. And why not? Okay. So the question is, what does John know? Well, here we go. That's, aren't I a good looking guy? <laughs> okay. Let, let me move this up. I'm going to enlarge this. I found this. And it, it was a trip through memory lane. Okay, so the question is this. How long have I been working with troubled teens? Since 1991. I graduated in 92. That was part of my internship. Aren't I a good-looking guy? Look at those glasses. Yeah, those glasses were more perfect hair back. for the 80s. Okay, but I want people to see something. Okay, that's 1991 in a runaway shelter. Probably 50 miles away from where the Trevor Project in West Hollywood is located. So who started working with troubled teens sooner? Thank you very much. You so, <laughs> right, so the Trevor Project started in 94. I started working with troubled kids in 91, the exact kind of kids they target. You can see there's a map would, of, uh, would you of the Orange County that, area behind uh, me there. Would you say that you had a large number of individuals who were engulfed into the trans movement back then? No, and that's what I want people to understand. Okay, you can imagine a runaway shelter in North Orange County. This was with with Crittenden Foster Care. They had uh, they were really the only youth shelter around. Uh, they contracted with different municipalities, different uh, as as private providers will. So we received kids from all over L.A. County, um, Orange County, uh, Inland Empire, which is San Bernardino and Redlands in that area. And you can see behind me, there were our files of cases. I have a child's file right in front of me. So this is what a counselor does. I wore two hats. I was case manager, a lot of paperwork there, and I was the therapist. So if you're going to um, end up dealing with, I'll get out of that now, troubled kids, if you want to find the most troubled, you're going to find them as runaways. Yeah, that's well, right. Well, that's what the LGBTQ now has said. That's what the Trevor Project focuses on. Focuses on. And West well, Hollywood question, was like a hub in the 80s and 90s for kids that got on the bus and went across the country and ended up there and uh, had and nothing and nowhere to music, go. And Music industry, Brad. That's that? right. Uh, your background is music industry, so yeah. you could probably tell us a lot more about how the kids think they're going to strike it rich, either in film or in music. I guess in music, they'll either go to Nashville or they're going to go, I guess, depend upon the genre. So it's a lure for very vulnerable kids that have run away. And so where are the greatest pools of sharks, wherever these vulnerable kids are going to, to go? And so the question is, over the years, let me ask the audience. Do you think the degree of internal pain that kids experience has uh, changed in terms of, let's say, diagnostically? Do you think that has changed over the years? And I can tell you, no. Pain is pain. The vast majority of the, those kids have been sexually abused. Right. That will create the greatest type of internal damage and questions. And, uh, you know, the kids are going to self-medicate. 
and they are ripe to be re-perpetrated upon. So the question is this, up until 2005, why didn't myself or, and in 2005, I was also running a 12-bed um, adolescent female group home, a teen group home, it was step down, step, step up or step down from psych unit. So with severely emotionally disturbed kids, that was out in Pennsylvania, but for years out in uh, California, working with these kids. So the question is this, Prior to 2005, why didn't myself or any of our colleagues see a trans kid? Because it didn't Great exist. question. Didn't exist. Because it is, it is man-made. Now, how can I say that? Because I've been in the industry for years, for 30 years. You say man-made, man-manipulated. <laughs> right? And I want people, I'm going to now scroll up on my word, uh, Jennifer Billick. Okay? And to help people understand that this is not about politics. Jennifer Billick and I, we've interacted briefly a couple times, kind of behind the scenes on social media. But she and I probably are very, very different in terms of politics. But most people will notice I don't talk politics. I purposely keep that out of it because when it comes to the safety of women and children, we should all be on the same page. Jennifer Billick in her 11th hour blog, and she has a news, uh, or I guess a substack, so you can see the address of it right there, J Billick dot substack dot com she literally last night just came out with this and i love the title sue me for blasphemy but there is no trans community now that's jennifer billick so we are so i recommend people go to that and read that so you have jennifer billick who one could say she's a radical feminist maybe she wouldn't radical um in a couple different ways i think she describes herself maybe she wouldn't anymore but either way, two people polar opposite on the uh, maybe the continuum of voting. But again, I don't get into that. How can two people from very different perspectives politically find common ground with this? Because we have to understand what we're dealing with. And nobody's talked about the issue better than Jennifer as far as trans humanism it's still way beyond me in a way the very real concerns about that where well, we're wait, at. hold on now isn't transhumanism something a little bit different than the trans movement there's two two different things going on right there transhumanism is to take us into a future of having you know computer chips within our bodies in our brains and and being manipulated that way obviously number one the government would love to have that kind of control uh so a close schwab and uh, his little minions in Davos. Um, but, you know, we, you mentioned there is no left or right. There is no Democrat, Republican in this situation because we should all be doing the right thing for the protection of women and children, which I agree with wholeheartedly. But let's face it, the left is the, 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 the side that's pushing this whole movement in a way that is confusing kids, confusing parents, confusing grandparents, and for some, confusion is just the beginning of the anger that they feel inside. Like, you know, once it comes through your door, it's, it's going to set you off in a whole other place. Um, you know, let me just ask you this, John. Uh, Chatty Charlie wanted to know, is there anyone to connect with it, Ontario, Canada, who is boots on the ground in opposition to the trans movement? And it just so happens, Chatty Charlie, that we do have somebody that's boots on the ground in Ontario who is a fantastic resource, and she's been on our program and is one of our guest hosts all the time. Uh, that is Dr. Ann Gillies. So you can find Dr. Ann. She has her own website and her own web pages, and we'll try to get that up in the chat or in a place that you can find her readily available and easy to get to. And uh, she's got a lot of great information for Ontario uh, individuals like yourself, Chatty Charlie, that's going to be able to point you in the right direction of the the movement there and, and show you that there is there is like-mindedness there from a lot of people in Ontario who have taken notice to this uh, this movement and are trying to do the right thing on behalf of women and children everywhere. John. Um, so, John, uh, Chatty Charlie also says Jennifer is brilliant. <laughs> so he knows exactly who, who that is. If you, if you want to see how much money and where it comes from, uh, Jennifer Billick has done the best investigative work. And and her link uh, or linking transhumanism with the trans movement, I'm still kind of on a learning curve with that. So my focus really is therapeutically 
helping these kids and keeping women and kids safe, because I understand the predators really well, uh, Jennifer Billick is making the case that as you separate kids from their bodies, uh, you're creating a dissociative state. And what I would say is that's the overlap from uh, where I come. You take a trauma survivor, and the majority of these kids, I'll give the profile of kids, by the way, that are in the trans movement. Okay, you either have predators or prey. That's really what this is coming down to. But the kids that we are trying to protect, really, we're trying to protect any of the kids. But what you're going to find is they fit a profile, and you're going to have a couple of these aspect, aspects. The majority of them have been groomed in one way or another, influence of pornography. Many of them have been sexually violated. They've had their sexual boundaries crossed. They've been sexually abused. They are on the autism spectrum. Now it's being also uh, referred to as neurodivergent. So these are kids that, whether through immunizations as far as shots or whatever's been going on, there has been an increase over the past 30 years. There's been a dramatic rise. Teachers can tell you that. I'm married to a, a, a second grade school teacher that recently retired. She said when she started her career, they had a few kids that had autism. By the time she left, there were four classrooms dedicated to kids that had autism. So statistically, something is going on. It's either in the water, it's something. Uh, I would submit to you it's probably immunizations, but that's for a different topic and a different uh, show host, so to speak. But right. something's going on. You don't see that kind of dramatic rise. And so why do we see that within the trans movement? Because kids that are on the autism spectrum have a difficult time with their intuition which means they have a different difficult time when it comes to boundaries uh reality testing which means this they have a difficult time knowing that they know that they know which means they can talk be talked into and out of things and they are a, a predator's perfect target because if i every predator has to uh, ensure their target of opportunity, the person they're targeting, eventually lets go of their intuition so they no longer have boundaries because your intuition is going to tell you something is fishy, something is up long before you have definitive information. The majority of predators are very slick and very smart. They're not going to pull out a weapon. And so they're going to manipulate somebody into lowering their boundaries. That's in the best of cases. You start with a kid who already questions their boundaries and who's had their boundaries crossed and who's been groomed on social media through pornography and then also with the inundation of the social media apps and then also this rapid onset, which social media has played a lot. Now you've created this pool of kids that is easy pickings for predators, as a matter of fact, or spe dark special interests, I've called. Uh, that I've labeled. And here is ultimately, as a matter of fact, speaking of um, uh, perpetrators, let me show you. Here's here's a great example of why we should all be concerned. Okay. You can have these two, these kind of men, these are both men that would show up, whether in drag or disrobe, it doesn't matter in this day and age, right? And let's say they show up to be part of a pride club. And the question is, are you okay with that? Can you discern the difference between art? So all the perp and perp apologists on social media that interact with me, they will call these men artists. Yeah, I call them con artists. Because if you can't figure out that these men would have, once upon a time, been arrested for exhibitionism and corrupting the morals of kids, which would get them at least two to five years in prison. How do I know? I was on psych staff for 11 years in the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. I run five sex offender treatment groups throughout the week. So w predators have found the perfect hunting grounds. If it's not in church, now they find it in this. And so we are not anti-anything. We are for the protection of women and children. So people need to understand how serious this has become. Uh, we'll continue now with, uh, before we get into the cash report, so people may have heard about that. We're going to show what that is. So here's a, an overview. Uh, I've shown this previously, but here is an overview of what I call some of the special interests or the dark special interests. So people can begin, hopefully, to understand that when you hear about the trans movement, you are hearing about all the, uh, it's a conglomeration, it's an um, amalgamation 
of different people that stand to benefit one way or the other, starting from the top right, you see big pharma, big medical doctors, there's a circle. This, by the way, comes from a video that I have on my channel called Understanding the Trans Movement. We've got plastic surgeons, uh, gender, transgender medical clinics and services, SOGI sex ed and Planned Parenthood, that's sexual orientation, gender identity. We've talked about that uh, many times, especially with um, Pierre Barnes, right? SOGI one, two, three, that's all the uh, deviant trans sex ed stuff. Human services, social services, and foster care, sales and marketing of trans uh, stuff, uh, media, different, uh, right, on the TV. We have corporations and corporate sponsors, then all the social media. Here, of course, is my area that I'm very concerned about, pimps and human traffickers, sexual predators and pedophiles. We've got the porn industry. We have politicians that are receiving a ton of money from, um, let's say, uh, Martina Rothblatt, uh, Jennifer Billick, again, will go into billionaires like that that are donating money. We have social en engineering. There's a George Soros, all right, end of things, big foundations, and then we have big banks that are making a lot of money. So if you think this is a spontaneous thing, you are mistaken. And if you think it's going to go away on its own, this is why we have such an uphill battle in legislator, uh, legis legis state legislatures and provincial uh, level and federal level because there's a, just a ton of money to be made off of these kids as well as sexual predation. So people are not going to let go of this easily. And so people need to understand prior to the year 2013, none of these services and none of the medical services were billable. The, the DSM-5 allowed everything to be billed. And that was the result of 12 plus one individuals, I call them the two dozen plus one, uh, who have never recanted, who have never said publicly, you know what, I think we made a mistake. Let's go back to the diagnostic criteria of the DSM-4. Trust me, I started clinical practice with the DSM-3, working with runaway kids. 90s. Right, I'm sorry? 90s. Um, yep. Yeah, in the early, early, late 80s, early 90s. And so I saw the DSM-3, then DSM-4, DSM-4-TR, that's text revision, and then the 5, and now the DSM-5-TR just came out. Okay, so I can, I can assure you we did effective work with kids, and there were no trans kids. There are no trans kids. There are boys and girls, males and females, so boys and girls that are minors, that are unduly influenced, and now they're confused. So, and uh, what I say to any therapist is this, if you focus on gender, in my estimation, you're ineffective at best. Why? Because gender is not the issue. For kids, whatever the presenting issue is, it's not the presenting issue. You would better be able to be um, intelligent enough to be able to help these kids figure out where is this problem coming from. So yeah, let me just bring this up because we're at a good spot here. Sandra Marr is one of our, our guests online viewing the show tonight, and she says they're messing with our minds. They're trying to flip abuses into acceptable behaviors. She says it's the mark of Satan, and I, you know, there's definitely an evil undertone there for sure with reversed meanings uh, in words and in terms, and and that's exactly true. We've talked about that before with Alvin Louie, and you know he uh, he really brings home um, the the meanings that have been and the definitions and and how the words have been manipulated to to really I guess get inside these kids' heads and and to think that this is okay, and then to have the parents thinking it's okay as well. Um, Sandra also says this actually is an abuse of our morals, standards, laws, parental authority, ownership of children, logic, society, norms, safekeeping, etc. So there's a lot going on here and, and we try to unpack that on a regular basis here on Unmasking the Trans Movement and uh, our live show is uh, exactly meant for, for that reason to help you know parents and grandparents along the way and and get the information that's going to be helpful so that you can do the right thing with with your grandchildren and and you know chatty charlie also has, has has another comment here he says this is so scary i have a grandson on the way and i'm terrified seriously considering homeschooling uh 
for uh, him for my daughter. And, you know, you're, you're absolutely right, Chatty Charlie. That's something that you do want to definitely consider. Um, this day and age, the schools are pushing it, and they're pushing it from a very young age of kindergarten. And um, they are trying to decipher who needs that help. These aren't doctors. These are school teachers, and they have no business within any of our kids' heads that deep. At any and school age. teachers that are activists. Yeah. That's what has happened. Um, leftist, a, leftist, what? leftist school teachers that are activists. Leftists, yeah. not Republicans, Democrats, and leftists. Yeah, well, again, I just focus on the issue, but you're correct, right? But in uh, for me, I try to stay away from any Politics. reference, right? Of course, of um, course. And you, and you I, should, I but I, I don't have to because I'm the host. No, that's right, right. I'm going to be the guy who's going to talk about the that's politics exactly side right. of it because I no, tell no, you what, right. here in Canada, they're going to double down. And the CAST report, that 338 page we're about to talk about in just another minute or so, that whole report is going to be blown off here in Canada. I can guarantee you Justin Trudeau is going to say, Pah! Too bad for that. We're doubling down. We're going to stick with this. We're going to make this happen. And we're going to continue on the same path we've been on. But the National Health Service, Dr. Uh, pediatrician Dr. Hillary Cass has done a great job with her team to produce a, a product after a four-year investigation. Is this the biggest investigation that's gone into this, John? I believe so. Brad, uh, they did a they did a nice job. But uh, I'll actually share my own my own thoughts. I, I it's not bad. You know, I, I was hoping for a Shazam. I was hoping for a hard hitting. In my estimation, it's good. But it could have been a lot more hard hitting. Oh, it right? should have been. I, I, I was been. kind of yeah. almost disappointed. But nobody can say it's biased. We'll get into that. What I want, what I want people to see, um, again, one of the reasons why this grand scheme, and let me, I'll, I'll choose my words carefully, just to help educate. In my estimation, I've been a therapist for 30 years, working with severely emotionally disturbed kids, sexual abuse survivors, and now for the past 15 years, also sex offenders, okay, men who have perpetrated. So I know both populations very well, or all, pop all those populations really well. The one thing that the trans, that the pushers of the trans deception have going for them is the average person and the average parent doesn't understand and because these people have letters after their names, they, the average person or parent backs off and thinks that these people are very erudite. I want to show people how, in a, when, when it comes down to it, when you're dealing with these activists, they are parroting scripts because you cannot defend rewriting biology 101. You cannot defend saying there are no XXXY chromosomes. There are no male and female. You cannot because the entire trans movement crumbles if you if you posit that there's male and female. It's over. So they have to get all of us to let go of our intuition. So I want people to see, some may have seen it, a clip of Dr. Rand Paul, who's Senator Paul here in the States, interviewing before Rachel Levin, who was, or Levine, who was the Pennsylvania Secretary of Health, who actually put all those sick in Pennsylvania, all the sick elderly back into convalescent hospitals, and in my estimation is guilty of mass murder. He got his own mother out before that scheme happened. Well, he now is in charge of, well, now he's an admiral, apparently. Uh, but what you're going to see is during the um, hearing, the testimony, to see whether or not they were going to vote for this guy, I want you to listen to how inept this medical doctor, who is a guy, Udo Hagen, actually knows um, of him. And apparently, according to Uta, he's still married to a woman. But I, uh, we're going to play a clip where you're going to see Dr. Levin parrot a memorized phrase which shows you when push comes to shove and when you when you are well armed you can dismantle their line of reasoning and they will go back to either memorized little statements or ad hominem attacks so you can find this as transgender biden official tries to outsmart rand paul let it go into the record that the witness refused to answer the question. Yeah. The question is a very specific genitalia. 
like surgical mutilation, hormonal interruption of puberty can permanently alter and prevent secondary sexual characteristics. The American College of Pediatricians reports that 80 to 95 percent of prepubertal children with gender dysphoria will exper experience resolution by late adolescence if not exposed to medical intervention and social affirmation. It's important to know that Dr. Rand Paul is a medical doctor. Dr. Levine, do you believe that minors are capable of making such a life-changing decision as changing one's sex? Well, Senator, thank you for your interest in this question. Um, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field um, with robust research and uh, standards of care that have been developed. And if I am fortunate enough to be confirmed as the Assistant Secretary of Health, I will look forward to working with you and your office and coming to your office and discussing the particulars of the standards of care for transgender yeah, medicine. The specific question was about minors. Let's be a little more specific since you evaded the question. Do you support the government intervening to override the parent's consent to give a child puberty block cross-sex hormones, and or amputation surgery of breasts and genitalia. You have said that you're willing to accelerate the protocols for street kids. I'm alarmed that poor kids with no parents who are homeless and distraught, you would just go through this and allow that to happen to a minor. I would hope that you would have compassion for Kira Bell, who's a 23-year-old girl who was confused with her identity. At 14, she read on the internet about something about transsexuals. She thought, well, maybe that's what I am. She ended up getting these puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones. She had her breasts amputated. But here's what ultimately she says now. And this is a very insightful from decision from someone who made a mistake but was led to believe this was a good thing by the medical community. I made a brash decision as a teenager as a lot of teenagers do, trying to find confidence and happiness, except now the rest of my life will be negatively affected, she said, adding that the medicalized gender transitioning was a very temporary, superficial fix for a very complex identity issue. What I'm alarmed at is that you're not willing to say absolutely minors shouldn't be making decisions to amputate their breast or to amputate their genitalia. For most of our history, we believe that minors don't have full rights and the parents need to be involved. So I'm alarmed that you won't say with certainty that minors should not have the ability to make the decision to take hormones that will affect them for the rest of their life. Will you make a more firm decision on whether or not minors should be involved in these decisions? Senator, uh, transgender medicine is a very complex and nuanced field, uh, and if confirmed to the position of Assistant Secretary of Health, I would certainly be pleased to come to your office and talk with you and your staff about the standards of care and the complexity of this field. Let it go into the record that the witness refused to answer the question. The question is a very specific one. Can minors be making yeah. these momentous decisions? Okay, that should appall everyone that that was the key government spokesperson setting policy so i want people to take heart in the fact that these are not intellectual giants that are pushing this these are radicals that have to memorize scripts because they can't defend this so i really want parents i want all good people to take heart that it's not this intellectual juggernaut that has come down the pike it is a grand scheme backed by tons of money, tons of uh, special dark interests that want to get their hands on, either financially or sexually, on these kids. And you heard one of the best... <laughs> All I could do is like push a button and repeat this little memorized script because it is defending the indefensible to say that the answer to a troubled teen is to sterilize them and amputate them. The, the trans deception, the transgender movement is a moving sidewalk. Wherever the kid steps on, it's going to dump them out onto a surgeon's gurney and leave them a customer for life for Big Pharma. That's what this is all about. They spit out a word salad every time Levine talks. Oh. He, he has a word salad every time. I'll still call him a he. I don't think he's fully transitioned on the okay. bottom half. The guy. How, the how about we put him through the bottom surgery and we'll see if he's Hello. still alive after to see... You know, um, he, he, he's, he's a poser. He's a poser for Biden. He's a poser for the medical health industry. He's a poser for the left. And, um, you know, uh, we have the same thing here in Canada with uh, Dr. Tam. 
Uh, nobody's sure whether Dr. Tam is a male or a female at this point. Uh, it's it's questionable at this point. We've seen some photos that you know could confirm that she used to be a he. Um, but this this seems to be going on with liberals here in Canada, and it seems to be going on in the Democratic side in the states. Again, politics aside, it just seems to be a push from the left, and um, you know they're uh, they're engulfing some uh, some conservative people, and, and really you know transitioning their kids, which is the real issue here. I mean, you, you've got to get a hold of your family. You've got to you've got to try to do the right thing. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, Sandra Marr has said tonight on, on the chat is uh, there's another goal here: prevent future babies from being born and lowering the population. And John, right. you, you spoke about with that. You, absolutely, a case could be made with eugenics. Now, if somebody says, "Oh, that's a str- that's okay," because my primary concern is protection of women and children. But when Planned Parenthood, again, this is not a right or left thing. The facts are this: Planned Parenthood's uh, founder, Margaret Sanger, was an avowed eugenist. E- eugenicist. Okay? Um, just look her up. And the fact that Planned Parenthood and all women should be incensed with the history now, because the question is this, where's Planned Parenthood in terms of their support of women? No, now they're, they're backing. Their support has gone to sexually deviant men who wear women's underwear and dress and drag and try to get into the private spaces of women. Is they have left we, women in the in the dust. Is this where we bring up W Path as well? Is that where this? How ties did you in? know? So what we're gonna? There's so much. <laughs> you know, we'll we'll keep coming back to some of the these different uh, points. Uh, let, as a matter of fact, Brad, let's we'll go to the cash report. Then I'm going to come back to a couple of points to help people understand how serious this is as far as the. Uh, protection of women and children. That's what's at stake because also the Biden administration is going to do away with Title IX on behalf of sexually deviant men. Right. So people need to understand how serious this is. Okay, the CAST report just came out. This is, uh, I have a couple screenshots. This is the okay. final report now that should really help shape the future of healthcare in not only can, uh, the U.S., but also across North America for that matter and around the world. Um, in the future of healthcare, this is, you know, the thing that, this is the one study I think that people should be walking away and going, we're going to have to, you know, put the brakes on this. We're going to have to take a look at this and, and, and make the right decision moving forward, which again is not promoting this. It's, it's, it's changing and, and, and making it, it, it change, taking away the, the gender distress, which is happening. Uh, that's, there we go. That's right. So um, you can go online. Here's the um, the site, and I will then switch to the uh, report itself. So you can see it is CASS, C-A-S-S dot independent dash review dot UK, the final report. Now, let me, I downloaded it. I've spent the afternoon looking at it. And again, I would say it's not bad. I was hoping for because um, when you see the opposition to this, I thought this was going to be a great hard-hitting report. You know, it's kind of a yawner in my estimation. So no one could criticize this for being, uh, you know, uh, right-based, heavy-handed. Uh, in summary, and you can see the thumbnails over here. I've gone kind of through it. No, as a matter of fact, just so. so I'll, I'll turn to some of these, but you can see I've gone through some of these uh, where you'll see my little yellow highlight because I wanted to know. So I've read the whole darn thing. Okay, as a matter of fact, we'll go to a couple of the um, things that were worthy of note. So like, um, let's just talk about John Stewart and James Palmer. They're two directors of the NHS, which is a National Health Service mm-hmm. out of England. Um they wrote a letter to Dr. Cass and, and, and talking about the importance and the significance of, of her report and her findings. Um, there are individuals out there who are taking this very, very seriously. And, and they should. They should. But what I want to say is, I could say to her credit, um, she was about as mild as somebody can be. So nobody can call this a radical report. Download it for yourself and do what I did. Just start reading through it. Okay. How about this? It often takes uh, the the yellow emboldened 
Part. It often takes many years before strongly positive research findings are incorporated into practice. There are many reasons for this. One is that doctors can be cautious in implementing new findings. So she's talking about, in essence, she's going to reference the Dutch study. Even that little section right there, what she's saying is that hasn't been followed. And so she's just, she really points out, let's see what else I highlighted. She really points out just obvious things. Firstly, you must have the same standards of care. So here's, here's one of the hard-hitting things from this report. Well, you have, must have the same standards of care as everyone else in the system. They have uh, socialized medicine. And that, that means basing treatments on good evidence. Now, there's a radical statement. So I've been Dr. Disappointed. Dr. Cass has, has really deplored the fact that the ideology was guiding treatment rather than yeah, care right. being directed by normal <laughs> principles of pediatrics and mental health, right? There, there you go. So here, here's a very simple statement. I've been disappointed by the lack of evidence on the long-term impact of taking hormones from an early age. What is that, a radical statement? That's pretty, pretty normal. I'll go, uh, this was an actual, this was a um, stat from long ago. I'm going to show people some uh, more recent stats. This is what Dr. Michelle Critelli in referencing stats, behavioral stats, this is what's called a J-curve. This is not a trend. A trend is maybe that dark green line. The only time you have this is in uh, brilliant target marketing or when you're dealing with a pandemic, a genuine pandemic, right? So it's, it's, this is the rate. Uh, these are the rates of referrals. I bet, and I bet what, you could, I can bet you can correlate this to the beginning of trans porn on the internet and the spike starting to rise i mean i guarantee it i guarantee there you go. It. my my assertion is this having been in the field that prior to the year 2005 there were no trans kids look at the rates of referrals exactly there's zero as a matter of fact now it's a perfect time let me get out of this i'm going to well, go back i think back. that's partially what some of the doctors are afraid of they're afraid she said dr cass and her report to do the things that they would normally do in other consultation with a young person and that can't be right she called for nhs gender services to return to a more holistic assessment of those referred um and that would have been a return to responsible therapeutic norms which guys like you have been talking about since 1991. That's right. If you download the report, uh, she has in boxes, I think, 32 recommendations. And I'll tell you the report in a nutshell, uh, what all the recommendations are. How about just normal medical practice? That's really, in my estimate, I walked away from reading that report saying, this is kind of vanilla. But it shows you how radical these the pushers of this ruse have gotten to where a, a groundbreaking report simply says, why don't we just be consistent with any other, with our medical practice in following these young people and don't do anything extreme? Well, some and of the so extreme stuff that she's done too, John, I mean, she specifically called for a halt in puberty blockers with this, with this report, and that's, per, and powerful hormones for that matter for those under 18. I think the other side is looking at it going up. Oh, well, we better write this lady off because she's radical. But the reality that's is that's, right. that's the finding, right? After doing a four year investigation. Uh, that's it. She's saying um, this is medical experimentation in essence. And it is. Since when have we ever done it? Next to uh, lobotomies, when have we ever done this? And again, I worked with kids prior to the Trevor project coming into existence. And I can tell you, you do not help a kid by focusing on their gender. You help a kid by finding out where the pain is coming from, which inevitably has to do with either perpetration or self-esteem. So and do you, you think there's gender-related distress in children? It's called adolescence. I agree. Uh, that's all it is. Confusion. So, <laughs> right? And prior to that, that means somebody's introducing concepts to kids. And so that means they're being groomed or influenced. It used to be that they're being groomed, you know, so meaning by somebody. Let me show a couple of things. People may have wondered, what did you just bring up on the screen? Well, we're going to talk about safeguarding here in a moment and what you saw. So I'm going to reference this just so people, I can normalize what people saw like a penis and stuff. I'll, I'll, I'll tell people what they actually saw. This is a bathroom. In the LGBTQ community, they will um, tout this guy. Okay, this is 
in their historical archives, okay, Keith Herring, once upon a time in 89, he went into the bathroom of the community center in Manhattan and they paid him to paint murals. Tell me what those look like. Wow. How about that? Wow. Do you know well, kids go in here? That's pretty straightforward as to what's going on there, isn't it? And so I simply asked that. So I asked this. Um, should any child be permitted in this bathroom? Should any adult be found with a child in a bathroom, having taken the child in this bathroom, should he be arrested? Or should he be considered uh, likely grooming the kid? Because, gee, you don't think a kid's going to look up on these walls? So I ask people a simple screening question. So two, here's my, here's my um, assessment. So two clinical assessment questions for all gender therapists who work with gender-confused youth. Your child client, or your uh, your child client says that he had fun on his special field trip to this community center, where they spent the day posing for pictures with this man. Okay, this is a guy from RuPaul's Drag Race, by the way. Okay, they posed for pictures in this historical gender-neutral restroom. Okay, so you're a teacher, you're a therapist, you're a mandated reporter. And this little child tells you that this adult who got naked, this cross-dressing man, took him into that bathroom to take this picture. What is your conclusion? And does that meet the criteria of a mandated report? If you hesitate, then the question is, how can you fulfill your most basic duties as a mandated reporter, which is to report suspected abuse. This is grooming, yet they call this historic and they won't paint it, they won't paint over it. So don't tell me that those pushing this uh, whole community aren't sexually deviant, especially the men. Okay, now here are the rates of referrals that I want people to understand to let you know this is man-made. So think about rates of referrals. This was to the um, gender uh, services in Wellington, so uh, in New Zealand, sorry, but you're going to find it's the same everywhere around the Western world, quite frankly. Look at the year 2005. Let's go find it where my cursor is down here. There's the DSM-4-TR. DSM-4 came out, I, I want to say, late 80s, early 90s. Okay, so we have the revision of the DSM-4, and all of a sudden, DSM-5, you notice anything? Let's choose another one. We're going to see if there are additional influences that have gone on. RuPaul Drag Race, when was that introduced into the public psyche? And, and those are a bunch of men cross-dressing guys wearing women's underwear and cross-dressing. And again, look at the year 2014. Any other influences that we might see? Remember Bruce Jenner. Well, look at the influence of the DSM-5, then all of a sudden an uptick. Do we have any other influences? Oh, yes, I am jazz. Now, historically, and people need to understand this, if a kid was gender confused, it was going to be a boy. You did not see gender confusion, confusion among girls. So the question is, what has caused that? A lot of these influences plus pornography because uh, girls are now seeing what boys are doing to girls online and they're seeking safe haven, quite frankly. Any other influences? Oh, there's Bruce again. Okay, here's some additional influences. We've got a lot of the social media sites. And again, look at 2013. There you go. There's a DSM. So it was there little by little, we were priming the pump, as it were, for it. And how much money is involved? There's a lot of money. 50%, look at it in bold, what I underlined in the past decade. Okay, Look at the rates, right? They've climbed a rate 50% year on year. This is an industry, so people are not going to let go of cash very easily. So that's why even with this new report, very conservative report, uh, it 
the cash report again it's in my estimation it's uh, she did a fine job an extensive job but it really is saying in a nutshell in my estimation you know what we should just approach this as we do anything else in a normal fashion why are we fast tracking these kids why are we being sloppy with their medical health and their mental health well you know the british labor party says that if they win the upcoming general election in england they're going to fully implement the cast reports recommendations so look there is some great things coming out of that and that's that's one country is 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 the uh england we've also got the united kingdom as well which is been enthusiastic. Uh, the new prime minister there, Rishi Sunak, uh, approved the report's recommendation for exercising extreme caution with the use of puberty blockers in youth, stating that we care about, we care above all about the well-being of all children. So, you know, countries, leaders of countries are starting to go, let's take a step back. Let's make sure we do the right thing. Let's pause. Let's, um, let's reevaluate. The CAS review is something I think that gave everybody an opportunity to recalibrate and, and take a look at the evidence placed in front of them. Um, again, looking for informed care at the heart of gender medicine that I, I wouldn't even say that it is gender medicine. It's, it's gender Frankenstein surgery. It certainly is. Brad, and uh, why don't we play a clip? I'm aware of the time. I'm going to play a brief clip from a video I put together. It was really the first uh, somewhat documentary that I put together called Understanding the Trans Movement. We have uh, this also in our um, interview that we did um, on the concerns about uh, the lack of ability to meaningfully reflect. Uh, I'm trying to recall, we've done so many programs on our site, I'll remember right. that one. Um, but I want people to see Dr. Bell was the former head of uh, the NHS uh, system when it came to Tavistock. And he started raising concerns. And I want people to see uh, the concerns he raises, and I've added a few detransitioner statements in here, but we'll play it for just a few moments. This is the guy that was head of the uh, Psychoanalytic Society, very accomplished individual, and listen to the concerns uh, he has raised in the past. Bell, a former president of the British Psychoanalytic Society, has recently retired. And in his first television interview since then, he began by outlining his worries about the service. The main concerns were issues to do with lack of proper, lack of consent, that the many of the people who spoke to me did not think the children were able to consent to the treatment. Then there were concerns of children being um, inappropriately um, pushed through to transition where they had a lot of complex problems. As a result, children have been very seriously damaged. I was basically put on different kinds of medications from age 12. Like, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. I was diagnosed with an eating disorder and depression and anxiety, like I already said. But nothing none of the medications that i was put on ever really seemed to help me very much i really just struggled and especially with the bipolar medication that was really intense they were having me put on antipsychotics from age 12. i took those for about two years so i took most of my medications until i was 15 and then i stopped taking them um, around age 14, 15, and that's, I, when I came out as trans, I was on no medications, which was definitely a problem that should have been addressed before anything else was done, except um, it wasn't. Um, I wasn't put on any medications. I wasn't put on a, a pill for depression. I wasn't put on anything for anxiety. I had no medication. I didn't want medication. All I wanted was the testosterone because I thought this is going to solve all my problems. The whole attitude of what's called affirmation instead of neutrality and inquiry caused considerable damage to the capacity of the service and clinicians to take on the full complexities of the cases they were dealing with. As a result, children have been very seriously damaged. I'm masked. A lot of what I was really feeling um, and I used being trans as a way to deal with all of the things that I was feeling um, 
looking back, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Of course, I wish someone would have said to me, you know, stop. Um, which, of course, like, I was a child uh, and I could have, you know, things could have ended up differently if, you know, but but there's no point in saying, like, what if. I was also very obsessed, like, I was obsessive. Um, and I feel like there were many red flags. There were all these red flags and I honestly wish that somebody had pointed them out to me and then I might not have transitioned in the first place. Uh, if I had realized that, you know, somebody with a history of an eating, an eating disorder, a history of childhood sexual abuse, a history of, you know, neglect and bullying for being a gender nonconforming female, a person with internalized homophobia and misogyny should not have been encouraged to transition as if these things could be solved by becoming man. Uh, and I just, I wish that somebody had sort of tried to stop me. By putting on that pathway, it rather becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. There we go. There's a lot more to that. We will continue, Brad, I'm aware of the time. Um, but it's a tragedy that these kids and their pain uh, are being exploited. There's no other way to put it. They're financially and sexually being exploited. They're taking trouble kids, the kind of kids that I have worked with for years, and instead of giving them help, they're gonna they're gonna whack off body parts. They're gonna sterilize them and amputate uh, sex organs. Like that's gonna do any good for anybody except line the pockets of these uh, Nazi-like doctors, and then make it even easier for sexual predators to gain access and to cross boundaries. So that's why we're concerned. And the CAS report, it is the least we can do, which is to say, you know what? We need to just take a methodical approach, a regular medical approach, like we would do with any other medical issue. That's really what the report's saying, so I couldn't agree more. I wish it was much more hard-hitting. Well, I'm just happy that we may get some results out of this and that people will, uh, medical um establishments around the world will jump on board and start to look a little bit deeper into their findings and 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 really try to i guess make it different in both women and children's lives going forward um and men for that matter men are being sucked into this too and <clears throat> we can't forget about them and we don't forget about them but their deviance uh comes from uh, grooming and deviance for porn and just there's a lot of things that have happened in the last five to seven to ten years that have taken people down this path that we unmask right here on the show and we do it each and every week just for that reason alone we want to thank charlie uh, chatty charlie for being with us tonight online and watching and being involved uh same thing with uh, sandra marr um we, we we still see you've you know been part of the live chat all night tonight and you've had some more great questions while we can't get them tonight We'll definitely get to them in a few, uh, an upcoming episode next week or the week after. Um, actually, we're going to be taking next Sunday off, so there won't be an episode next Sunday. But uh, the following week, we'll be back on track again. I just need to uh, take a step out and, and head out of town for that particular weekend and have that booked well in advance to our live shows, even being a part of, uh, of our platform. Um, there is uh, a, a lot to, to take in and, it, you know, people have a chance to, to learn and get educated right here with this program. We want to thank everybody for watching tonight. We want you to please like, share, subscribe, follow, comment. Um, we're on a couple of different platforms. Uh, one of them is BitChute. We also have uh, our YouTube channel as well, which John has graciously set up, and that's why we're broadcasting live from there tonight. Uh, we also have our own website at unmaskingthetransmovement.com where you can find out all kinds of helpful information and find the resources uh, that you need, including all the information that, you know, whether if you're in Canada, we'll, we'll direct you to Pierre Barnes and, and get you the information from the SOGI123 aspect of things and, and really get you... Uh, I guess, tied in and clued into what's happening here in our country because what's happening in the States isn't necessarily happening here. Justin has his, his hands around our necks and uh, he's squeezing a little bit tighter every single day uh, and we need to do our best to get him out of power ASAP. Before we leave tonight, John, last word, it's all yours. 
We appreciate people tuning in. Spread the word. It will take one one week break, uh, Brad, but uh, spread the word. We're here. Uh, we do this because we care. And we want to help educate people so that ultimately we can help protect women and children because, again, it's not just the kids that they're going after. Now with the uh, Biden administration here in the U.S., uh, trying to do away with Title IX, it's going to make it much easier for sexually deviant men to access the private spaces of women and children. Uh, they're going to gain access to uh, through a locker room, sports teams, as well as then they're going to be able to continue to access. Uh, deviant men will be able to access, as far as male inmates, they're going to be able to access all the more uh, female prisons. So this is really an attack upon women and children, and it is time, regardless of political persuasion, that all of us stand up and stand against this push to gain access to women and children. 100%. Thank you for your time tonight, John. Always a pleasure. We look forward to having you back again in a couple of weeks. And um, there's going to be a lot more to talk about as we move forward. I, the CAST report, I don't think we're done discussing that. We, we kind of touched on it a little bit here tonight for a, a good half an hour of our show. But um, as we move forward, things are going to start to come into reality. And we're going to be able to talk about them more readily and openly because the CAST report is probably going to help some medical associations. Uh, again, I don't think it's going to be here in Canada, but uh, the U.S., I think, will jump on board with, especially with your big uh, November uh, election coming up. I think you get that individual into power down there, and we're going to see a whole different United States of America, which we here in Canada are, are really hoping happens because we kind of need your support moving forward, too, to get us out of the bind that we're in with the... Uh, uh, I won't, I'll stop on the politics. <laughs> we'll see you guys next week. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you again for watching. On behalf of John Euler, I'm Brad Wilder. We'll see you next time.